if you are God's person, you will not walk, you will not stand, you will not sit in ungodly places with ungodly actions going on. We're going to take a look at Psalm number one. I don't know when you last looked at the Psalms. It's a part of what is called the wisdom literature of the Bible. And um, the reason it's referred to that is there is so much wisdom from God contained in these books. And um, Psalms uh, are just a favorite part of the Bible for me. There's so much there. Uh, this Psalm in particular gives us a really clear view of uh, what God expects of us. It compares and contrasts righteousness versus wickedness and lays it out very clearly for us. Um, at the risk of insulting my uh, technology brothers and sisters, and you know who you are out there, uh, God's system that he has established for us is kind of like what you do with computers. And back in the day, in the last century, Jan, when there was all these big machines in rooms, and then they said, well, we're going to have some of these smaller machines that will fit on your desk. Uh, and people started laughing about taking these huge machines and putting them on your desk. But we did arrive there. But there was a time where they thought everybody should know how to write the software. And so they started training people. And you'd go in there and they'd start explaining how to write this. And the first thing they said was, this is a binary system. And we looked at each other and, okay, binary. But what that gets at, and help me out here, one and zero. If you look at code, it's a string of ones and zeros in a certain order, and that's what makes your machine, like your phone, your iPad, whatever, it makes that work. And you say, well, how could that be? It's just ones and zeros. Well, I can't explain it, but that's what it is. And so, in a sense, God has a binary system for you and me. He's trying to keep it simple, folks. He says, there's right and there's wrong. There's sin, and there's righteousness. Does that sound like mom? <laughs> My mom was very much, there's right and there's wrong, and you better do the right thing. And she was powerful. She was five foot two, uh, but mighty. And so God has established a system for you and me, people. There's right and there's wrong. And he wants us to do the right thing. And so we need to keep it simple. I'd like to read through this first psalm. You can either look at it there or you can uh, read from your Bible. But it says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of the mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked. They're like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Um, six verses, and yet packed with the powerful description of right and wrong in the sight of God. And this morning I'd like us to take a look at that. Um, righteous people are those who are trying to do the right thing according to God's plan. Sometimes we, we see these words and we want to make them too complicated, but we're really talking about trying to do the right thing. And it says here, 
You will be blessed if you seek to do God's will and do the right thing. Uh, it's interesting to me that in the introductory verses, it says what you won't do if you're God's person. And it puts it in active words. If you are God's person, you will not walk, you will not stand, you will not sit in ungodly places with ungodly actions going on. You'll avoid that. You won't even go there. Well, what if you get there by mistake? <laughs> uh, one of our sons, whenever something bad happened or he did something he wasn't supposed to do, he had a, a way to get out of it. He thought, he said that was on accident. Well, now occasionally there are accidents, but when they continue to happen frequently on a regular basis, uh, we weren't buying into that. But he kept trying that, that it was on accident that he did that bad thing. And uh, I don't know how he's doing today. I haven't talked to him, but uh, we'll, we'll check that out later. But do not walk, stand, or sit in the way of the wicked. Um, those are actions uh, that we need to think about. Are we trying to avoid walking that way? Are we avoid in situations where we know it's evil and wicked and ungodly? Um, hopefully we are. And God's saying, that's what I expect of you. Um, reading on down here about these good people, uh, it says, his delight, meaning the godly person, is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. Um, in this congregation, we put value on God's word, do we not? We read it. We have Bible classes for everybody from the wee little ones. And weren't they cute this morning? Aren't they always cute? If Jan and I were up here and we started running towards that door, it wouldn't be near as cute, Jan, I'm sorry. <laughs> as these wee little people that are so eager to get through that door and to get into what is waiting for them. Um, I think there is some delight among these little people on the law of the Lord. They're not sure about the law of the Lord yet, but they're delighted to get over there where they are going to learn about God's word. Um, if we could... Chris, could we do some kind of a transfusion? You know, each of us get a little kid. You set up some kind of a, a line or something, and we can just get a little, or maybe give us a shot of that enthusiasm there to uh, help us be heading in a good direction. But that's what he's saying here. The good person, and you know who you are out there, his delight or her is in the law of the Lord. Um, and then the next part is trickier. Notice what it says. And on his law, he meditates day and night. Does that mean you have to stay up all night and meditate on God? Some of us have a problem with that. Some of us nod off uh, just sitting there. Um, and you know who you are. I'm not calling names on that either. Uh, but meditate on the law of God uh, day and night. Um, I think the implication there is during the day, during the evening, while we are awake and experiencing life each day, we do think about what God wants us to do, what God has done for us, uh, how we've been blessed. Uh, one of the things that strikes me is uh, how do you go out and preach the gospel to a stranger that you don't know? You know, you meet him in Walmart parking lot or wherever you are. Well, I don't think you have to call him aside and, and, and read Psalm number one and give him a 15-minute sermon on that. I don't think that's going to happen. But did you ever stop and think, what would Jesus do? That used to be something that went around. Remember the little thing that you wore on your wrist and so forth? Um, 
But what would Jesus do when he encountered someone? Well, you look at the scriptures. Number one, he was interested in people, whoever they were. And indeed, as he encountered someone, he tried to greet them in a friendly way. He would try to appreciate them. Um, we have a lot of strife in this country, if you hadn't noticed. If you haven't watched the news lately, there's a lot of strife going on. And I've just got to say, sometimes it's a racial thing. And I bumped into a, a gentleman the other day in Walmart parking lot, and he happened to be of a different color than me. <laughs> uh, and we said hello, and we were walking in together, and we started talking, and I said to him, you know, if we believed everything that was on the news, you and I shouldn't even be talking to each other. Maybe we ought to be throwing rocks at each other or something, but I said, we're having a nice conversation. And he just smiled, and, and I did too, and I said, see, out where the real people live, we're okay. And things are going to be all right. And Jesus was that way, wasn't he? As he encountered someone, he was interested in them because they were a person. And I think we need to emulate Jesus that way, particularly in these days. Uh, we need to really uh, let people know, I care about you because you're a person. I hope you have a good day. Uh, you hear that a lot, have a good day. We need to mean that. We need to express ourselves to others in a way that they believe we mean that we hope you have a good day. And there's ways of saying that and doing that so people understand that we really are sincere and that uh, they might say, well, boy, you're kind of unusual. Nobody says have a good day and really means it. Well, let me tell you why I feel that way. And, and that could be an opening. I'm having a good day because of Jesus. Oh, now you're starting to preach, right? No, you're just letting them know who you are and why you're having a good day. And who knows where that could lead? Don't know. But you get, see what I'm getting at? We're not preaching sermons here. Jesus said you live it. Live it every day and live it with those around you. Um, seek to do the right thing. And notice here the next part, which I really like. It says this godly person, that would be you, is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Um, water is so basic. I'm not going into a science lesson here. <laughs> but water is basic to your life. I forget, and one of you science people can tell us what percentage of our body is moisture, water, liquid, that kind of thing. Uh, I do know that we have more oceans than we have land. I remember my geography teacher explaining that. So water is vital to your life and my life physically, but he's talking here about spiritual water and about the fact that if we are God's people, we are planted there where we have plenty of spiritual water that's going to sustain our soul and it's going to allow us to live for God and live for others. Uh, whatever he does prospers. Yesterday, I don't know what's going to happen as a result of all the work that went on. Uh, we had these little children. I like to think of them as rugrats sometimes because they're all over the place. Um, they were having fun. They were learning things. Uh, a lot of neat things were happening. What's that going to mean in their life? I don't know. But there was some planting going on. They were seeing you folks that were here helping them to have fun, giving them food to eat, uh, having the games that we played, uh, coloring. I mean, it was just amazing what all was going on. It's hard to imagine what it looked like yesterday when I look out here, because <laughs> it was a whole nother world. But that's going to prosper in, in various ways because people took the time to do the right thing. Let's look at the other side of that coin very quickly here as we look at what it says here in the latter part. Not so with the wicked. What we just learned about those who are seeking God's way. 
All those things are wonderful, and they're contributing what God wants. But not so with the wicked. They're not like a tree planted by the water that's blossoming and blooming and giving fruit and all of that. No, they're like chaff. Uh, you, if you haven't been around the country lately, you don't know what chaff is. Uh, but it's what's left over after they cut the wheat and all these other uh, products, and it's just old stubble things. It's like crummy looking grass, and it's all dried, and it's not worth much unless you're a goat. Goats love it, but goats will eat anything. Uh, but the wicked are like this chaff, and that the wind blows away. And if you've, well, maybe you haven't, but if you've ever been around a field, you see it blowing things away that are left over uh, of no use. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, uh, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. It's interesting to me that this psalm uses verbs. Let's go back and just quickly take a look at that. It talks about the good people, that they walk in the counsel of the wicked. They stand, uh, they sit in the good places. The wicked, it says, the wicked will not stand uh, in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. Take that home with you. If you're seeking God today, if that's what you do, the Lord watches over you. I didn't say it's going to be easy. Uh, but he's watching over you, and he is taking care of you. But the way of the wicked will perish. That's a powerful word. The wicked will not live on. They will perish. Several weeks ago, uh, Richard Hammonds had a sermon on what we call the prodigal son. It was a good sermon. And uh, the thing that, that strikes me about that parable, which is the parable of Jesus, is not necessarily the two sons, although they are a big part of that story. The part that I think is important, especially for us today as we look at the lesson I have presented to you, it is that the father, who in that parable represents God, he saw the son way down there, way down there, way down 54, almost at 41. And he saw him, and he was looking for him. And he'd been looking a long time, but he didn't give up. He kept looking. And when he saw that boy coming down the road, he said, well, it's about time. What were you thinking? I can't believe you've been gone this long. And have you come to your senses yet? Have you figured out I was right and you're wrong? Uh, that's a different translation. No. He ran. I don't know how old that guy was, but he was a father. He ran. And he ran down to that boy. Grabbed him. That's God. That's what he does. We're going to sing a song. Jan's going to lead it. It's our custom to have a song of encouragement or invitation. And what it's about is if there's anyone here who needs some prayers, we got prayers. They're good. They'll pray with you and for you. We'll pray with you. If there's somebody that really hasn't accepted Jesus, we'd love to be a part of that today. And uh, whatever it is your needs may be spiritually this morning, we're here to help you.